Hi and welcome to VectorX. I have recently uploaded a new Raspberry Pi 4 VectorX and WirePod image. You find the link in the description. It fixes most of the problems of the previous one, in particular this one as an upgrade feature. Once you set it up, you'll be able to upgrade to newer releases without refreshing. If you have already installed the previous image, you can also get to this one via manual update using SSH. I explain the procedure in the description. The aim of VectorX WirePod image is to deliver a fully working open source escape pod for your vector that anyone can install and set up using only the user interface. The setup procedure is the same as explained in a previous video. The link again is in the description. So after flashing the image, the Pi enters access point mode and broadcasts its own Wi-Fi network called VectorX Setup. You connect, point your browser to a particular IP address and use the user interface to give the Pi access to your home Wi-Fi network. Then the Pi will stop the access point and connect to the network you have chosen and start WarPod. All this was already possible with the old image. The new part came now because the, the user interface of the VectorX control panel is totally new. It has a dashboard showing basic stats like uptime and the number of voice commands handled. It shows also whether all WirePod parameters are OK to run uh, uh, VectorX, but uh, since uh, this uh, is a pre-built image with uh, exactly the same, you should always see only green checks here. Note that uh, the image is for people who don't want to mess up with technicalities, but at the same time it is a full-fledged development environment with Go, Python and OpenCV installed, so developers can also use it to contribute to VectorX or to do whatever they want. Of course, if you enter it uh, with SSH and start changing stuff, you must know what, we, what you are doing or else, for example, you can break the update procedure. One of the coolest things of the new UI is that all of your onboarded robots will show up here. And uh, the icon gets the color of vector eyes. So if you change a vector eyes color, the icon will change background too. My vector today has this striking yellow eyes. <laughs> Also, since the VectorX allows you to give a name to your vector, it will show up here with his given name, in my case, Tom. As the serial number will be displayed, but this is not so cool. If you click on the robot, either here or here, you are taken to the VectorX robot control page. I created this page to give a quick access to the new features that VectorX enables. For example, simple utilities like uh, rolling a die or the bingo, or more complex uh, game like uh, Pong and uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors. These uh, include uh, computer vision. Then you have uh, the language section with the inst instant translator and uh, the localization changer. And then the weather forecast where you can specify a location or as a vector in the reply will use uh, the default location you set up when uh, you run the onboarded of the robot. Then we have the chat and personality. For example, here finally you can set uh, your robot name. Uh, for example, my one is uh, named Tom now. I can name him, him Jerry. Just for testing because I kind of hate. I kind of hate the brown rat mm, vector told me that uh, his name uh, is now Jerry and uh, okay 
Now, here's Jerry. All these features are implemented with voice commands and uh, here you can see an example of which sentence to use to trigger each action. If you change vector localization, however, you will need to know the voice input in the language you have chosen. Since writing documentation is very demanding and boring, I have created a web page that uh, pull it out from the source code. This one, voice command help. Here, very roughly, you pick a custom intent and you get back a list of uh, the sentences that uh, you need to use in uh, any of the supporting languages to trigger the action. Then you have a link to the Warpod console here to do all the rest. I must remember to open the link in another window because there is no link to come back. This is because uh, VectorX is built on top of Warpod and uh, Warpod knows nothing of VectorX. I mentioned the update feature. This will likely change in the future, but for now when you go to the update page and uh, click the button, it will run a script that updates the Git repositories, rebuild the source code, run the setup in silent mode, restart all needed services. It takes roughly less than a minute. It detects that a new version has been installed when the release tag changes. There is uh, not yet a mechanism to check whether a new version is available before running the update procedure, but hey, I said it's likely gonna change in the future. I know how to do that. While we wait, let me add some words on a few major improvements coming with this release. First, everything runs much faster because uh, the Go sources are compiled into binary code. Also, the SDK is initialized only when it really needs to, so there isn't any lag when you're trying to execute non-VectorX commands. Since VectorX is a preprocessor to WirePod, it needs to be fast. Okay no updates found. Also, there are uh, bug fixes. I'm not uh, uh, sure the OpenCV stuff was working in the previous image, while here I tested everything and it works as expected. expected. You can play rock, paper, scissors with vector. Uh, another thing that has been fixed uh, is finding out vector I color when he's using a custom one. When we draw some animation like weather conditions or games, the eye color is used to paint the graphics. But when using customized eye colors, also there are bug fixes. Also there are bug fixes. I'm not sure the OpenCV stuff was working in the previous image, while here I tested everything and it works as expected. So you can play rock, pepper, scissors with Vector. Another thing that has been fixed is finding out Vector's eye color when he's using a custom one. When we draw some animation, like uh, for weather conditions or games, the eye color is used to paint the graphics. But when using custom eye color, the graphics were white and not of the correct color. Now this is fixed. I'm pretty much satisfied with this. If I do more development on this, well, it depends on how many people decide to use it. Also feel free to suggest improvements or bug fixing using GitHub. Thanks for watching and see you next.